today who is studying the new name and the baptism by fire. Volume 16, number 36, Beloved Jesus the Christ, September the 9th, 1973. As we come together, we're often thinking and wondering. At the end of time, what is gonna happen? God has given us a glimpse of the things that was gonna, that's gonna happen at the end of time. When we have made our resurrection. In our teaching today, it teaches us, ask us to prepare for our ascension. They're asking us to work more toward our ascension. And not just by happenstance saying and going along that we will make our ascension. Our transition, without a doubt. But our ascension is something that we are supposed to be working on based on the teaching that we have that's right in front of us and that they are asking us uh, to work on. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, it tells us, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirits say to the churches. So the churches are you and I. So you ha we have to be listening to what's going on in the world. God is telling us, and Jesus is telling us in the teaching today that we're reading, he tells us that I have called to you and I have spoken your name upon the wind. So our name has been called more times than one upon the wind. Often, you know, we're sitting around and the first thing that we do is that we're listening and, you know, you jump and it's like, well, somebody call me and you get up and you go in to check, maybe it's your wife or whomever and you ask them that, did you call me? And it's like, no, I didn't call you. So now you go back in and you prepare and continue doing what you was doing. So as we uh, hear and read, you know, your name has been spoken upon the wind. So now the name that you, uh, you know, we are given at this time in life, at our birth, is so that we are able to, uh, the I am presence, and know who we are. Because we won't receive our name that's written up on the white stone until after we've made our resurrection, not just our transition, it says resurrection. So that is the reason that we uh, ask to start doing the work that we're supposed to be doing at this time. And he go in it, in the Bible, it reads, it goes on to say to him who overcome, I will give some of the hidden manner to eat and I will give him a white stone and on the stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So now the key thing is, is that to him who will overcome, I will give him some of the hidden manner. So if we remember the Israelite as they was going through uh, the wilderness, they received the hidden manner. They received manner from God because when they was out there, they didn't have anything to eat. And they was getting upset. Uh, with Moses. So it's like, you know, you got to go in and make some calls and, uh, you know, do some work because we're hungry and we want to eat. So he, Moses, you know, they spoke to God and God fixed it so that uh, the partridge came in the, uh, in the evening and they had manna in the morning for, you know, for breakfast. But the key thing of it is, is just know that the manna that we are receiving is going to be spiritual nourishment. So as we receive that spiritual nourishment each and every morning that we get up, you know, he's feeding us so that we are able to walk and understand what it is that we are getting and what it, where it is that we are going. And I'll start off by reading. It says, my beloved, 
I have called to you and I've spoken your name upon the wind and in the fire and in the earth and in the water. I have pronounced the new name, which no man knoweth, save it the father. For the true name of each man, each woman, and each child is written in the book of life and inscribed with the fiery core of being. So as stated, your name, my name, we're gonna be given this white stone that has our name on it. So I can't take your stone because your stone, only you know your name, the name that you will receive from the Almighty during the time of your resurrection. And Jesus tells us that the person who overcomes by faith amidst terrible circumstance will receive his hidden name and the manner and the white stone. And therefore I baptize you, one and all, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, I baptize you in the name of the name that's on the hidden stone. Today, we're being baptized on that name, that hidden name. We're made, being made aware of our name. So it's not that you know it, it's not written in front of you, but you're able to receive it this day in consciousness. As your consciousness rise up, this will give us something to work on and to work toward so that we'll know what the Almighty is expecting and, and what he's giving us. He's given us that opportunity to receive that new name and to receive that wisdom that he's given us, that that consciousness that he's raising us up to and asking us to step up and be the man that we're supposed to be. A woman, sorry. Until that hour, precious heart, I'm sorry, and I baptize you in a name written in the book of life, and you shall receive that name at the hour of your resurrection. Until that hour, precious heart, let no man impose another name upon you, save the name given you at birth. That is the name that holds the key to the I am presence. So as the I am presence is guiding us along and keeping us on the straight and narrow, the name that we have received at, at birth, that's put on our birth certificate, as we receive that, that name and as everyone is given a social security number. So your number follows you through life. But at the end of life, you're gonna be able to have your name and my name on that white stone which is gonna be our graduation gift of moving forward in the resurrection time of life. Jesus tells us that our new name, that name that we receive at the resurrection will hold the key for us as we move forward into eternal life. And as I have baptized, I'm sorry, and as I have baptized you with the sacred fire, so then the energy coils, which are released from our new name, it says the new name, but I'm gonna say your new name, are released into the world this hour. And this is the meaning of baptism by fire. As we were stating early on is that you, we are being baptized this day as John baptized Jesus. And John had told Jesus says, no, you know, I, you should be baptizing me. I'm not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus is saying to us today that we're being baptized by the sacred fire, that light of the almighty, that as we receive our new name, we will have that baptism by fire. And for the real name of every man is the key that unlocks the energy of the core being. And as Jesus is sharing with us today that he has already baptized us with the sacred fire and it's being released into our world this hour. And this is the meaning of baptism by fire for the real name of every man is the key that unlocks 
the energies of the core of being. As John, as John came to preach the baptism of repentance from sin, so I, Jesus, also proclaim and preach the baptism of the sacred fire, which is put on each devotee in stages of unfoldment and in increments of light. The putting on of the new man and the putting off of the old man must be a daily process. And we learn in Ephesians as our consciousness is raised daily, our belief in Christ should rise also, which give rise to the putting on of the new man and the putting off of the old. As Christ is blessing us each and every day as we continue to be robed in his higher understanding and consciousness and wisdom. So as each and every day that we put on the new consciousness of God, we wake up, we should give thanks that the Almighty has blessed us and given us the opportunity to raise our consciousness. We are being raised from the old man the day prior to the new man today. So as we go forward, let's continue to understand and work in that wisdom. And it goes forth to say, as your consciousness is raised daily, our belief in Christ should also rise. And so I came to the disciples, and Jesus says, and so I came to the disciples, to all would hear my words, those in the Essene community, to preach deliverance from the round of, round of self-justification. In other words, excuses for our action, that's self-justification. Now in the Essene community, I was reading that these are, uh, their way was is that, the one thing that they did is that they would never leave one person behind. Whatever was going on within that community, everybody would be able to be blessed accordingly. Uh, you know, whatever you received that you wore, you wore that until it was tattered and torn and then you got a new. So that way each and every person, once they came there, everyone was given the same amount as far as their blessing, as so that one person wasn't over the other one. But also, it says, from the round of self-righteousness and moral superiority, and the condemnation of the inner Christ at being. And I rejoice, excuse me, and I rejoice this day that many hearts the world around during this 2000 year cycle have received that teaching have benefited thereby and have gained entry into the courts of Luxor and how many have ascended. It is pleasing to the hierarchy and yet to the hierarchy have raised the standard and requires that more among mankind prepare for the ascension. For these are the time of acceleration and the Lords of Kama have permitted me to come again and to assist St. Germain in the Aquarian age to assist mankind to find freedom through the Christ example of life. So as we were speaking early on is that the hierarchy, they are looking at what's going on and they are asking for more of us to continue to work toward our ascension. Not that the ones that are not working toward it, but they want more to come forward out of that, just like out of the Essene community. O angels from the central sun, descend at this hour and infuse the earth now with the fires of regeneration from my heart. My heart is a flame to stay and all consuming fire fusing light with light and melt in darkness. And thus the heaven and the new earth began to unfold in the consciousness of those attuned to my office as world teachers. Being attuned to the consciousness of God will keep our hearts in flame with that light. So as we untune our hearts each and every day, as we rise or before we retire, we're able to see that light and that light will keep that flame burning within us for more and more wisdom and understanding as God has given us that opportunity to receive that light. And Jesus goes on to say, angels from the central sun, 
take your places appointed by the Almighty, fixed upon the grids in the force field of terror. Now the electrodes of the mighty Elohims are being inserted, being inserted at certain points upon the planetary body where angels stand guard. Those I have invoked, those that I have invoked in a prearranged ceremony ordained at the courts of the sacred fire for the holding of the balance of the planet Earth during the realignment of the four lower bodies and of the axis. These electrodes are in fixed position and the blueprint of these position is held within the retreat of mighty cosmic Cusco's. And I, Jesus, have placed my electronic presence as the focal point for the electrode. And thus I stand in the risen body of the Christ, the body which I wore at the hour of the resurrection, the focus of consciousness of the resurrection for mankind. I stand with my armed outreach, radiating the light of the central suns, the fire of the resurrection unto mankind. And I shall hold that focus as the Christ of the Andes and these selected points across the planetary body. And surrounding that electronic presence shall stand 12 angels in circles to keep the way of the tree of life by the power of the flaming sword and each angel holds the sword, the replica of the sword of Eden. As we remember in, in the book of Eden, it tells of, of when Adam and Eve sinned and they covered themselves with fig leaves that God came through looking for them and, and asked, you know, Adam, where was he? And he said that, you know, we felt your spirit coming and we hid ourselves. And they asked, why did you hide yourselves? He said, because we were naked. It's like, how did you know that you was naked? And it's like, well, uh, you know, the woman gave me to eat. And, you know, I ate. And so now his eyes was open. And uh, so that was the first thing that they was told not to do as far as they knew that they could eat of the tree of the fruit, but of of uh, you know, good and evil, they were not supposed to be doing. So as far as God covering their first sin, he did it with the skin so uh, of an animal. So as we are moving forward and asking for that blessing to remove all that is unlike thee, when God put the cherubim there in the garden to protect the tree of life. So as they stand, they are standing there standing guard and protecting. And God calls, he says, mighty cherubim, mighty cherubim, descend and take your position. Thus the guardian action of the sacred fire is established. I am the guard. So as the angels, the cherubim, take their place around the tree of life, they are there for the protection and the guidance and the wisdom. The angelic host shall keep the way of the tree of life on behalf of mankind, desiring to pass the initiation of the 12 solar hierarchies and the flame and sword shall stand to guard mankind's consciousness against the amplification of the lunar substance, which tears down the holy innocent consciousness of the Christ and man. And whether or not mankind has an awareness of these tests, they shall also be fortified, but it shall take an act of free will, as it is always has and always will for man to align his consciousness with the consciousness of God. And therefore those angels formerly fallen ones who have now accepted the Christ consciousness, who has been taken to the great central sun and repolarized to the will of God, stand ready to serve the earth and they come forth to balance the energies which they have misused against life. Their hearts rejoice and they are full of gratitude to each one of you for your standing fast while the mother of the flame made invocation before the courts of the sacred fire in their behalf. These angels are friend at court and they shall stand to defend you in your hour of need. Invoke them, I say, for they shall always come when you call upon them. 
they should they stand then to enforce reinforce the angels who've kept the way of the tree of life at the portals of the 12 hierarchies of the sun surrounding my electronic presence these are now and there are now 144 such focuses anchored upon the planetary body so as jesus is sharing with us you know these angels are there protecting those electrode and protecting all the things that are being that, that we are in need of and that keep us in alignment with the light of God. If we call upon them, they are there and ready to administer to us whatever light and wisdom that we need. This is the essence of the moment of the casual momentum of the casual body of the cosmos being able being available to every man and woman and child for the influx of the golden liquid light that is the elixir given by angelic band hands at inner levels at the hour of every man transfiguration. Thus in all in this, thus all is in readiness and the guardian action of the sacred fire will serve to hold the balance as you in embodiment seeks to hold the balance and serve together as one mind, one body, and one soul. I am Jesus, and my name is given for the salvation of a planet and a people. My name, precious heart, as the fiery core of hieroglyph of my God identity, is given as the center of the spiral of light, whereupon all mankind may find their own na new name written in the book of life. So as we continue on our path, and looking for our new name that will be written in the book of life. God is asking us to continue and stay on that journey. For by tracing the spirals of the God identity of the Christ at one, the son of God, each individual come to the flame of the only begotten son. And within that flame, he finds his own true name. Thus life is one. And as you acknowledge the Christ in me or in any ascended master, being you acknowledge the christ within yourself and therefore no man can come to the father except he confess the lord christ jesus thus it is written for as i set the record as the example of the christ to the age so no man in that age can bypass my identity my living consciousness and be found worthy to receive the father for no man can bypass the Christ of his being. I say then that in the next 2000 year cycle, it shall come to pass that all mankind should bow the knee and confess the Christ being Saint Germain, the God of freedom to the earth. And if mankind will not humble themselves before the Christ of one who stand to bear witness of the flame of life, then they shall also see the attrition of their own flame and the receding of their own Christ consciousness. Inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these and the greatest of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me, says Jesus, and unto your own Christ self. Let the energy spiral then release from, be released from the inner being of each one of you and all who have attained to this level of awareness upon the planetary body for the light of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending come forth through the sacred hieroglyph and you are the newness of the name of the name of the holy one of god i seal you this day and i proclaim the holiness of the manifestation of god within you forevermore i am your elder brother on the path that leads all home in the name of almighty god as we give thanks for thy presence beloved jesus for thy guidance and thy wisdom as we go forth in thy light and thy guidance, guide us and direct us, bless each and every one that receive thy light and thy word and thy message today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen.